Thank you very much, uh, Jaume. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I'm very happy to welcome the Prime Minister of Finland, uh, Sanna Marin, uh, to the European Parliament. We just had a very, very comprehensive, uh, broad overview in the debate, both uh, with uh, the Prime Minister's uh, speech and then followed by a round of political group leaders and then uh, the answers uh, by the Prime Minister. Uh, we know how challenging these last weeks and months have been. Finland uh, is a country that I know and I love, and I'm so proud and pleased uh, to see it leading the debate at this uh, very critical point in Finland and in Europe's future. Uh, the debate uh, was one of a series uh, of the debates that is called This is Europe. It allowed us uh, to exchange views on how we see Europe and how we want it to develop further. Uh, we also, uh, Sanna and myself, had a very good bilateral meeting this morning earlier. At this crucial time, we need to keep uh, standing up for the values that makes Europe what it is and worth fighting for. And Finland understands only too well how real the challenges that we all face are and what is at risk. On our continent, Ukraine and Ukrainians are defending these values and our support must remain unwavering. We cannot give in to war fatigue or Russian disinformation. And Ukraine deserves and needs all the humanitarian, military and political support that we can provide. And I am proud that this week the European Parliament will adopt 5 billion euros of macro-financial assistance to Ukraine. At the same time, we must also understand that when uh, inflation, prices of gas and electricity are soaring, people worry. And we must cushion this blow on our citizens, on our populations. And there are things that we can do together, even uh, temporarily, to limit the impact while we implement long-term strategies. And therefore, we look forward to the Commission presenting the concrete proposals tomorrow. But what is clear is that we can no longer afford to depend on undependable actors. We can no longer afford energy islands and we can no longer delay our green transition. Second, work must start immediately to build a real security and defence union that is complementary to NATO. There are Finland's historic decision to join NATO uh, together with Sweden will strengthen security in Northern Europe and in the Baltic Sea area, and I welcome this decision because the Russian aggression in Ukraine shows the need for us to cooperate more closely and stick together. These are decisions that we need to take and decisions that we need to implement now. What we cannot do is delay, and I'm convinced that Finland will play a central role in shaping and leading the future of a more resilient, more united Europe, because together we can achieve more. I'll stop here and hand over uh, to Sanna, dear Prime Minister, who will be then all of us be ready to answer your questions. Sanna. Dear Roberta, dear representatives of the media, my visit to the European Parliament was long overdue and it was planned uh, way, way ahead, but I'm very glad to be here today, finally. This truly is the political soul of the Union and a driving force of European integration. I'm very pleased to be finally here in Strasbourg. It was a great honour to discuss with the Parliament today. Thank you for the invitation, dear Ropeda. In my speech, I stressed the need to support Ukraine and to continue doing so, no matter what. Russia must not win the war and we will not allow this to happen. Over the weekend, we have heard the great news about the success of Ukrainian forces against the brutal Russian army. Yet, our help will still be needed for a long time. Europeans must stay committed to this effort. As leaders, we need to build and rebuild this unity all the time. The winter will be difficult. We see high energy prices already creating political division. Inflation will test many European societies but we really have no choice but to stay united. Russia's use of energy as a weapon is behind these problems. It is also ever more clear that we must carry on with the green transition. 
yet we must do so in a fair manner so that no one will be left behind. In this context, let me stress once more the importance of making the European Union stronger. Developing the EU's strategic autonomy is necessity, not luxury. We are not there yet. Developing strategic autonomy requires action across all policy fields. A more systematic approach is needed. Because of Russia's war against Ukraine is the final wake-up call that the EU must be able to stand on its own two feet when needed. Thank you so much, Roberta, dear friends. Thank you. We we'll take some questions now. Please be so kind to uh, introduce yourself. Yes, please. Albar Curi, uh, Rai Radio Italy. Uh, my, my question is to Sanna Marin, and the question is about uh, joining your proposed to join uh, NATO. Uh, so uh, we know that Mr. Erdogan is not a democratic leader. And what's the situation? What what are the relationship? What is the relationship with? Um, Turkey in this moment. We know that there is an agreement between you and uh, uh, Turkey. We, we, we want to know what is the situation now and what you, uh, you want to do. Uh, because the problem could be that uh, Erdogan could put again a veto well, thank you so much for the question. I don't want to speculate. Uh, we are now in the middle of ratification process, and of course we want a swift, swift uh, smooth, and, and as fast as possible ratification uh, from all the NATO members. Uh, we are, of course, discussing uh, with Turkey uh, frequently uh, on the issues that they have raised and, and working uh, from, the, from the ground that we have agreed on. Uh, so. We are now in the middle of ratification process, but I don't want to speculate uh, about any problems we have. We don't have at the moment uh, any information that there should be a problem of Turkey ratification, Finland's uh, NATO membership application. So we're discussing and, and hopefully the ratification process will continue smoothly and, and fastly. Yes, next question, you please. Hello, uh, I am Eleonora Vasquez from Iraqtiv. I have a, a, a question for the Prime Minister. Um, in your speech, you, uh, you just said how it's important to be united uh, uh, in principle uh, to react to the, um, the invasion of Ukraine. But what I don't understand is actually your position on the treaty change and uh, on the foreign policy, because uh, after uh, what we did with the enlargement, we need a more um, united Europe in terms of foreign policy. And for foreign policy, it means that in some areas we, we, need, we don't need a veto anymore. And we to new vetoes in the future, we um, risk to be more blocked in terms of acting quickly in terms of crisis. So my question is, what is the reason uh, uh, your country is against this uh, um, treaty reform, despite uh, uh, you are uh, in principle in favor of a more united uh, Europe in foreign policy? Thank you. Uh, well, thank you so much. I must say I didn't quite get the question. Uh, I think that it's very important that we uh, are abling uh, European countries uh, to, to apply for European Union membership when they fulfill the criteria. Finland has been very proactive and very cohesive when it comes to enlargement. And we are saying to all European countries, if you fulfill the criteria, you are welcome. And it's very important for different countries to make the reforms that they are committed to uh, and actually just... Uh, during the spring, I visited, for example, Western Balkan countries, and they are, many countries are making the reforms and, and making uh, the, the work uh, to become a member. So I think it's also very important that we are uh, cohesive in our message, that we are reliable as partners, and, and when different countries are heading those targets, we are saying, you're welcome. So actually, Finland is, is for and has been for a long time uh, very cohesive when it comes to enlargement policies. Next question. Yes, please. 
and then we'll go back. Yes, sorry. Tamás Foti from the Hungarian Press. Um, I'd like to have a follow-up on the NATO membership. Uh, um, I don't ask you to speculate, but maybe you can uh, a little bit uh, tell us about the conditions. Are you ready to extradite people uh, demanded by, by uh, Erdogan, who are, for example, uh, journalists, close ties with the, with the Kurdish uh, Workers' Party? Thank you. Rule of law is very important for Finland, and this is a value that we, we think very highly of, uh, and these are not political decisions. We are not discussing in, in government uh, about people uh, who should be expelled from, from Finland or not. Uh, these are not uh, decisions made by politicians. These are decisions made by uh, civil servants and, and of course, uh, the institutions uh, of, of uh, law. So we are very very uh, serious when it comes to rule of law. Now, RTB first, and then Bloomberg. RTB, please. Bonjour, Pierre Gallo pour la RTBF, Média de service public belge. Euh, ma question s'adresse à vous, Madame la Première Ministre. Euh, Madame Kanko vient juste de parler de la place des femmes en politique. Euh, vous avez vous-même subi des attaques, les attaques dont les femmes sont souvent victimes euh, et la cible euh, en politique. Que voudriez-vous dire à une jeune femme, une jeune fille qui voudrait se lancer en politique Je travaille sur un projet qui s'adresse aux jeunes adolescents et aux jeunes adolescentes. Et donc je voudrais avoir votre avis là-dessus. Qu'est-ce que vous diriez à une jeune femme qui veut se lancer en politique et qui aurait peur de ces attaques Before um, Sanan says, I would like to come in uh, on this and I would also like to tell you this uh, was mentioned during the debate in the, in the room. Uh, the feeling was felt. Uh, that uh, it can be difficult to be uh, a woman uh, in politics, but I think I speak on behalf of everybody in this parliament to say that not only do we stand uh, with Sanna, but with everybody who uh, is in politics for the right reasons and is not uh, or should not be in a position to be judged for any activities that are uh, taking place outside the political realm. I think that it was important as a message for us to send. I can tell you that uh, that was a message that was sent uh, universally by the parliament today to Sanna. What, what would I say? I would say you are capable, you are strong, you can change the world, just do it. Thank you. Jorge. Jorge Valero with Bloomberg here. A um, couple of questions for the Prime Minister as well. First, uh, on sanctions, you want more, more and harder sanctions on Russia. Uh, what sanctions are you thinking about, and do you see any unity among member states to continue pressing uh, Putin on, on this front? And secondly, on the gas uh, price cap, uh, the proposal says that is not going to come this week finally, as member states continue to be divided over its design. So. Do you think that this sends a warning signal about the European unity among the member states? And do you think that these, uh, let's say, differences will be overcome in the near future? Well, of course, we are waiting. Uh, all of us are waiting about the concrete proposals from the Commission. Finland has, and Finland has been uh, very pro uh, to all uh, sanctions and all proposals on sanctions uh, during this war. Uh, I think it's very important that we are not saying no to sanctions because the sanctions are all, all, our only way uh, to make Russia weaker uh, and affect Russia's economy. So we are very open when it comes to, for example, all the uh, energy sanctions against Russia that the Commission has proposed and my, my, uh, may propose. Uh, but we will hear more of this tomorrow. Um, I think we also have to make sure that we are not making uh, disturbance on the energy market in Europe. So there are quite difficult balance between uh, different actions to take. And I think, and I, I know that the Commission is also taking uh, this different perspective very seriously, and they are uh, balancing, uh, for example, uh, the work, um, the, the functioning of, of European energy market and 
uh, the sanctions that we need to take against Russia to make Russia's economy weaker. But we are uh, very much in favour of tougher sanctions, and I think they are necessary for us uh, to take to make Russia weaker and make sure that Ukraine will win the war. Next question over there, the lady, please. Yes. Hello, um, Suzanne Lynch from Politico. Um, this is a, pres a question for President Metzola. It's about the appointments last night of your chef de cabinet as the new Secretary General of the European Parliament. There's been a lot of criticism of that procedure, and in particular that the other candidates were only giving a brief opportunity to present uh, at the meeting. Do you have a comment on that? Suzanne, thank you very much uh, for the question. Uh, the Bureau of the Parliament for this room and also for Sanna's information is made up of 14 vice presidents uh, besides myself, elected by uh, the plenary. Uh, yesterday, the Bureau followed an internal uh, procedure of the Parliament and took a decision by a very large majority uh, on who uh, should be uh, the next Secretary General of this Parliament. Uh, it was my duty and continues to be my duty to ensure a fair and equal process. It was the most open process in the history of this institution. The vacancy was published several months ago. It was open for everybody to apply. Eligibility checks were conducted and for the very first time ever there was more than one candidate presented uh, for the job. In fact, there were four candidates that uh, gave a lengthy presentation, after which multiple questions were posed to each candidate, after which deliberations were held, and a vote uh, was taken. For the avoidance of doubt, I did not take uh, a vote in that process. The result was very clear, with only one vote against uh, and three abstentions. What I can also say on the selected cabin, uh, candidate is that I will work closely, as I have always worked, uh, with the, the current Secretary General, the next Secretary General and all the Director General to reform the Parliament, always taking into account the institution, its interests and the need for this institution to be effective, pragmatic and to have as broad a geographic and gender balance at all levels. Thank you. Yes, please. Hi. <clears throat> Serena Danna, Open. Uh, my question is for both. Um, in a few weeks, Giorgia Meloni um, may become Italy's first female leader, as you probably know. Uh, as the Washington Post wrote today, she set a benchmark for a far-right politician in Western Europe. So yesterday she said that uh, if she wins for the European Union, the free ride is over, literally, la pacchia è finita. So are you worried of losing an important partner and ally as Italy in your project of Europe? Is soon having elections uh, and Italians have the right to vote who they think uh, are the most capable of leading the country. And, of course, as another country's leader, I don't want to comment on, on the elections uh, of, of Italy. Uh, I think it's very important that during these very difficult uh, moments in, in Europe, we are united uh, when it comes to the threat of, of Russia to us all, not only to Ukraine, but to us all. Russia is using energy as a weapon against the European Union. Uh, and I want to think that every country and every politician in, in, Europe, in Europe sees how severe the situation is. But I don't want to comment on, on Italy's uh, politics or upcoming elections. I think the Italians have the right to vote whomever they want. Um, to continue on that note, uh, I have seen unprecedented unity in the European Council um, between uh, leaders of the member states uh, coming from different political backgrounds. Uh, I do also not want to speculate on the outcome of a democratic process uh, in Italy. Uh, what I can say is that most of the political forces that are competing in this electoral campaign are in favour of European integration and they have reiterated the importance of transatlantic cooperation, the role of NATO and European values. Uh, now it is up for the Italian people to vote uh, and we will then see what happens.